Dear Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you for the opportunity to come and worship together. To look at your word. To put your word in our hearts. That we may change our hearts. Instead of being going about normal, we can go about your business and not the world's business. We thank you for that, Father. We thank you for your Son. And as we go through this mission today, Father, I pray that we can all learn to be a watchman. And let our fellow human beings know that there is danger in this world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today, of course, is Isaiah 9.10. The bricks are falling down, but we will build with hewn stone. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. A while back, I was over at the prison, and I was handing out the book, The Sanctuary Service, by M.L. Andreessen. And as I was doing so, one of the guys said to me, he says, Have you read the book, The Harbinger, yet? And I said, no, but I will. I don't read too many. I'm not a very good reader anyway. But I, I made a point to order and, and read this book. And it is by Jonathan Kahn. And he leads the Hope of the World Ministries and the Jerusalem Center, Beth Israel, in Wayne, New Jersey. And it tells a story from 9-11 through 2008 and the main theme of the story is Isaiah 9 10 this is what it says in the beginning of the book what you are about to read is presented in the form of a story but what it contains within the story is real and as I was reading this book, I said, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. Everything just seemed to, to fall into place. There are three characters in this book. The prophet, Nurel, which is a writer, and a publisher named Anna. And it opens up with Norell going to this publisher and telling her everything that the prophet had told him. He had a little voice recorder so he recorded everything that went on so he could get it all verbatim. I'm not going to go into that story that much just to let you know that the inspiration from this came from that book. One day I came in from prison a little early and Dan had the superintendent remarks. And I said, hey, can I read something from this? And he looked up and it was like 10 after 10 already. He says, no, we're running too late. I said, okay, maybe I'll do it on a, you know, superintendent remarks. And I said, well, I can do it as a sermon. Because I, I was disappointed. I really wanted to read it. It fit right in with what you were saying. And I thought about this and thought about this. And it just seemed to hit home, especially with, with me. The, it, this is from the intro to Isaiah from the Complete Jewish Study Bible. Isaiah begins his ministry in a time when both the northern and the southern kingdoms are declining politically and spiritually, and both threatened with judgment from God. The northern kingdom was particularly evil, having no good kings. Under the Assyrian king, Tilgat Filzner, Fil yeah, the third, uh, the Assyrians began invading Israel. The Assyrians captive of northern kingdom in 722 BC makes Judah even more vulnerable to attack. 
But during these attacks is when they made this statement. We will rebuild when they knock, knock our houses down. It's arrogance. The same as this country is arrogant. We get so far away from God. We think we can do everything by ourselves without need of God. This is from Matthew Henry. Bible commentary. Here are terrible threatenings which are directed primarily against Israel, the kingdom of the ten tribes, Ephraim, Samaria, the ruin of which is here foretold with all the woeful confusion that were the prefaces to that ruin, all which came to pass within a few years after. But they look further to all the enemies of the throne and the kingdom of Christ, the son of David and read the doom of the nations that forgot God and will not have Christ to reign over them. The preface to this prediction, the Lord sent a word to Jacob, Israel. Sent it by his servant, the prophet. He warns before he wounds. He sent notice what he would do, that they might meet him in the way of his judgment but they would not take the hint took no care to turn away his wrath and so it lifted up Israel for no word of God shall fall to the ground it fell upon them as a storm of rain and hail from on high which they could not avoid it was lighted upon them that is it is as sure to come as it come already and all the people shall know by feeling feeling it what they would not what they would not know by hearing it those that are willingly ignorant of the wrath of God revealed from the heaven against sin and sinners shall be made to know it the sins charged upon the people of Israel which provoked God to bring these judgments upon them, their insolent defiance of the justice of God. Thinking themselves a match for him, they say in the pride and stoutness of their heart, let God himself do his worst. We will hold our own and make our own, and, excuse me, and make our part good with him. If he ruins our houses, we will repair them and make them stronger and finer than they were before. Our landlord shall not use, shall, excuse me, our landlord shall not turn us out of doors, though we pay him no rent. But we will keep a possession, in possession. If the houses that were built of brick be demolished in the war, we will rebuild them with human stone. That shall not so easily be thrown down. If the enemy cut down the sycamore, we will plant cedars in the room of them. We will make a hand of God's judgment. We will make a hand of God's judgment gained by them and so outbrave them. They were getting further and further away from God. They didn't really know God. They were turning more and more to idols. And judgment fell on them. The Assyrians took them in 722 BC. This is from Ezekiel chapter 33, 1 through 9. And it's talking about a watchman. Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts, and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the horn, and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, 
if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. In verse 6, But if the watchman see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, therefore thou shalt hear the word of my mouth and warn them from me. That's our job. We are watchmen. We are to tell the world our Lord and Savior is coming very, very soon. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not seek, excuse me, speak to warn the wicked of his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from it, from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Each year for the past, oh, I don't know, for a long time now, we've been going up to New Jersey once a year to see my mom. And we stop at my brother's house in Virginia, and most of the times we talk about God. It seems easy to sit there and talk to him. This last time we did not. And I always have the resolve to go and tell my mom and ask my mom, where does she stand with Jesus? And you know, I fail every time. I don't know what it is. As much as I love my mom and she loves us, and when we were going, uh, when they put us in church, she taught us the Lord's Prayer and things like that. It, it is hard to sit and talk with her. She's 92 and a half, so there's not much time left for me to tell her about our Lord and Savior and how good he is. I have three younger brothers. I'm the only one that even bothers to go to church. So, sir? I need to. So I fall in verse 33, or chapter 33, verse 8, don't I? When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require of thee. Right, thine hand. It's... Uh, It's something. We think we're doing everything we can. We go to the prison and we tell them. People I don't even know. But I have a hard time talking to my mom. Am I the only one? Do we talk to our kids? My kids are being brought up in this church. They normally come every Sabbath. But we still need to talk to them and, and, and put into their hearts the love of Jesus. It's not just a Sabbath thing. It's a 24-7 thing. You know, there are two reasons that there's a watchman in, in, in the biblical times. Or probably more than two. But one of them, whenever the first sliver of a new moon came, they would blow the trumpet. 
to let the people know that a new month had arrived. And then as the watchman, when he sees trouble coming, he was to blow the horn to warn the people. This is what I wanted to read a while back, Dan. And this, this is what, what struck me. There's a few things in this book that I didn't agree. He talked about death a couple times, and I def definitely don't agree with the, his assessment of death. But everything else, because it was history and, and, and fell right into place. And this is on, starting on page 249. So Norell, he said, do you think you're ready? Ready to fulfill your call? I don't know. I have no idea what to do. You'll be led, just as you were led to me. But it's not my message. It's your message. I'd just be a messenger, a go-between. If they asked me anything about it, I wouldn't know what to say. Oh, that sounds familiar for me anyway. No, he replied. The message isn't mine. All I am is a messenger as you will be. As I, as, and if I needed help, would you be there, I asked. And how could I reach you? I think you know better than that, he replied. You don't need to reach me. The time of imparting is finished. So I won't see you again. Unless he deems otherwise, no, you won't see me again. The words hit me harder than I would have expected them to. You know, I said, I think I'm going to miss our meetings and all the uncertainty, the uncertainty of not knowing when or where or how you'd appear next and how it would happen to happen that I'd be there with you when you did. Things will still happen to happen, he said, as you follow his leading. And at the end of this, he has a little anointing service. He says, I commit into your hands, your servant, in his weakness, be to him a strength. In his not knowing, be to him his assurance. Cause him to walk in the footsteps you've prepared beforehand. Pour out upon him the spirit of your anointing that he might fulfill your charge. Guide him, protect him, prepare his hands for battle. Bless and keep him. Cause the light of your countenance to shine upon him. Spread over his life the tabernacle of your glory and shelter him in the covering of your grace. In the name of the anointed one, the glory of Israel, the light of the world. When we go knocking on doors, when we go to the prison, when we talk to our families, God is right there with us. We don't think about that. We don't, we think we're knocking on that door all by ourselves or with somebody else to give us moral support. You know, I support somebody and they support me and we joyfully go. But God is there with us every step, every word. We need to all do this. We need to somehow all be part of spreading God's word and letting people know that the end is coming. Brother Dan and myself have been going over Revelation chapter 14 a few times this past year. And in verse 6 it says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, 
having an everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. We're that angel. God could use heavenly angels, but we're the angel that they're talking about here. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of the water. You know, we accept Jesus for who he is. And as soon as we accept him, he tells us in here that we have eternal life. But there's a, a but in there also. That but is we need to do our part. Whoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yes, we will. But that belief is an active belief. It's not sitting on my butt watching a sermon on TV. Not coming to Sabbath, just to church on Sabbath. Not coming to, to prayer meetings. It's more than that. It's telling our friends, our neighbors. It's being a watchman. Being a watchman. Babylon's going to fall pretty soon. The end is gaining on us very, very soon. We're getting closer and closer to the end. And as we do, we need to be, we need to be ready. We need to tell our friends and neighbors to be ready. If they accept it, great. If they don't accept it, I'm sorry. We knocked on their door. All they have to do is open the door of their hearts and let Jesus in. We need to be, we need to be watchmen. Our closing is not a, it's not a hymn, it's a scripture reading. And it's number 815. Rona, could you come up and help please? 815, watchfulness. Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them slip from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he made with you. Do not make yourself an idol in the form of anything the Lord your God has forbidden. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one take you captive through hallow and deceptive philosophy, which depend on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith because you know that your brother throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. Be on guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch.
watch. Our opening song was contained watch in it. We don't know the hour when he's coming. We have to watch and be ready. We have to set our things aside. We have to totally turn over control of our lives to our Lord and Savior. Let's pray, please. Dear Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you for our son, your son Jesus, our brother, our savior, our creator. And we pray, Father, that through him, the people here in this church and other churches will be true watchmen, that they will take to heart your word and spread it to others, whether by word of mouth, by deed, some by giving. However we do it, Father, be with us as we do it. Help us to help others find their way home. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.